Okay, thanks, thanks for your introduction. Uh, my name is Andy, I'm the uh, CEO of BlockSec. Today I'm going to talk about um, uh, the way to secure Web3 through um, proactive threat prevention. So uh, BlockSec was uh, uh, founded in uh, 2021, backed by some uh, top investors and uh, customers, and we have a couple of um, products you know, to, uh, available to the community. And like the Falcon, I think uh, most of the security researchers, they already use our uh, Falcon uh, Explorer to, you know, to virtualize the uh, transactions, and we have uh, the Metadoc, Metasnooth, uh, which are free to the community. Um, so why security matters in Web3, right? So even in this uh, bull market, uh, sorry, even in the cycle of the bull and uh, bear markets, the, the losses caused by the uh, DeFi hacks and the DeFi scams are, are really increasing. And this is not just the numbers, right? We receive the emails every day from the victims of the attackers and the scams saying that they have been attacked and they lose, they lose all the money and so they want us to help them. So this is just not the numbers. They represent the individuals who, uh, who are facing the bankruptcy after being attacked, right? We, we have to help them. So why DeFi hacks are, are very uh, common today? I think there are a couple reasons. One reason is that we have uh, the attackers, they have the economic incentives to, you know, to perform the DeFi hacks because by performing the DeFi hacks, they can uh, get paid. They can, they can get paid by a, large, a, a lot of money, right? So, and we also, we do not have um, enough uh, security qualified developers. Some developers, they, they are more focusing on the functionalities of the protocol, right? They do not have enough security trainings and the universities, they do not teach the block a blockchain security uh, courses. We do not have too many courses uh, currently available in the um, community, in the universities. And also, you know, some, uh, some hackers are performed by the countrywide organizations. I, I do not need to talk too much about this. I think most of them will understand that. So um, when talking about the, the security of the protocol, most of, most of people will, uh, will, will think about the code audit. Yes, uh, and the code audit is the most common way, you know, to solve uh, the security issues in the DeFi protocols. I, we think the, uh, the code audit helps, but the code audit is not enough, right? That's because the qualified auditing services are very expensive and also time consuming, right? You need to like wait in two months or three months, even half year to be audited by a top uh, audited firm. So you, you can, some, some protocols, they, they do not have enough time to wait, right? And also we do not have enough qualified auditors in this space, right? So if, you, if one auditor firm that just issue the, this, the auditor certificates and this certificate will eventually, will no longer be trusted by the community, right? So some pro because of these reasons, the, the protocol have to go live without some better tested uh, threat prevention and attack prevention solutions. They just go live without any security measures in their hands. So we, because of this, we need to have a more proactive approach, right? So the more proactive ap approach means that a protocol needs to know what is currently happening to their protocol. They cannot just put their protocol online, then go to sleep, right? They need to know what, what's, what is currently happening, who is interacting with the protocol. Then something bad happens, the protocol needs to know how to automatically respond to such attack transactions to, to respond to such bad things, right? So why the proactive approach is much important in Web3, right? Because we also have the uh, Web2 security and some guys saying that, why do we need that in Web3? Because we do not have that in Web2. Why do we need have this in Web3? That's because the Web3 uh, introduces much more attack vectors and the openness, the openness in the blockchain makes the attack much easier than in the Web2 because everyone can look in on the a smart contract on a blockchain. Uh, most of the smart contracts on a blockchain are open source, so the, the good guys and the bad guys, they can see all the same source code, right? They can find the vulnerability in the source code. Then if there is a vulnerability, then they can attack the vulnerability to gain a large number of profits. And also because the blockchain is anonymous, it's very hard, if not impossible, you know, to check the funnel flow of an attacker, right? So when an attack happens to the uh, DeFi protocol, we always saying that the, the protocol asking who can help us to contact Beyonce, who can help us to contact some exchanger, because 
it's very, very hard, you know, to track the funnel flows uh, for the attackers. And also, the, the flash node helps to enlarge the money that an, an attacker can have, right? So in the Web2, if you find a vulnerability, and in order to launch this attack, you need to have two million US dollars, but most of people, you know, they do not have such, uh, uh, such, a, such a big money to launch an attack. But in blockchain, you have the flash node, right? You can borrow a very large number of money from the flash node services, and then launch an attack, and then pay back uh, to the flash node. And also some uh, private transaction services, it can be abused, you know, to launch an attack. We have seen so many attacks, they, are abu they were abusing the flash board services, you know, to uh, issue the attack transaction from being observed uh, in the memory pool. So because all of this uh, unique properties in the uh, Web3, the attackers happens, happen in Web3 space, cause more damages to the protocols, cause more damage to the users, right? And it's much easy, much hard to track the attackers in the Web3. So because of all these reasons, so in BlockSec, we have um, developed uh, a prototype system uh, since last year, since uh, February 2022, uh, we are thinking about how to solve these issues besides the code auditing, right? So we think can we, can we take a more proactive solutions to defend the DeFi hacks? So based on this uh, source inside the block side, we have developed uh, a system called Falcon Block. So Falcon Block, the basic idea of Falcon Block is that we can listen to the uh, transaction inside the memory pool. We can listen to the transaction on the blockchain. We also listen to the reverted transactions, right? So why do we need to listen to the reverted transaction? That's because the attackers, they may uh, make a mistake and the attack transaction can be reverted, right? So if we can capture such reverted attack transaction, we can also automatically make some response. After that, we can reconstruct, right? We, we can reconstruct the attack logic by replaying the attack transactions and copy the essential logic, attack logic of the attack contract to synthesize a new rescue smart contract and then issue the rescue transactions through some uh, flashbots or through uh, by giving a higher gas fee, something like that, to, to make sure that our rescue transact can be much uh, uh, quicker or can be uh, on the blockchain uh, behind the attack transactions. So by doing so, right, we can um, block, we can even block the attack transactions, right? So because we are much uh, faster and uh, we are uh, before, we are, we are in the header of the attack transaction inside the block. So how the, so the, 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 the essential part of this uh, mechanism or this system is how to automatically reconstruct the attacker uh, transaction and the attacker contract. So I think the basic idea is think about it, uh, attacker transactions and uh, an and attacker smart contract. What, uh, what matters most in this uh, attack contract, right? So what matters most is the attack logic inside this smart contract. And also some, the attackers, they will, they will uh, perform some authentications to the callers of this attack smart contract because they do not want their attack smart contract being called by others. So you need to bypass all these checks automatically, right? So what do we, what, what do, we do? So we replace this attack transaction inside the memory pool, we can get a chain of the basic blocks or the trace of this uh, 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 attack transactions, right? Of a chain of the basic block. So in this, uh, in this, in this uh, chain of the basic blocks, we can replace the jump I instructions. We call the frozen the jump I instructions into the jump instruction, jump to the uh, attack logic instead of the reverted basic block that because of the failure of the authentication of the uh, attack contract. So we can simply replace, right, replace the jump I instructions to the jump instructions. So this is the basic idea of the, how the uh, methodology is. But when we do the, but when we, uh, uh, but just uh, simply replacing the, the instruction does not work in all cases because we have some technical challenges, one of that, um, when we uh, replay, uh, one of that is uh, uh, how to uh, deal with the uh, reuse the basic block inside a smart contract. The reuse the basic block is a very common um, 
uh, uh, usage by the byte code generated by the compiler uh, to, sit, to, to reduce the size, to reduce the code size. So suppose we have like uh, two different uh, jump targets, RA1 and I 0 and we have some uh, new jump targets, right? So we need to have a mapping between this uh, old jump target and uh, new jump targets. So we use a trampoline uh, basic uh, uh, for this purpose. So the basic idea is it's just a, it's just a similar with the uh, bi uh, is a, a, a binary code rewriting which we have uh, started uh, uh, and developed uh, I think more than uh, two decades, right? Uh, even 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 uh, uh, even even earlier for the uh, the bi bi uh, for the code rewritten uh, techniques. So we, we bought the similar ideas uh, and used into the uh, byte code uh, rewritten. And by using this system, we have uh, a couple of successful stories to, um, to rescue the funds to block the uh, attack transaction uh, for a couple of protocols. Like we uh, rescued 500 million US dollars this year for the Paris space and uh, 3.8 million US dollars for the set of finance last year and a couple of others. So in the following, I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple of um, uh, representative examples of how we block these uh, transactions. So for the Paris space, uh, which happened, the attacker happened this March, right? Uh, the attacker made some mistakes, right? So they did not give enough gas, uh, gas to uh, perform the attack. So the attack transaction reverted. As I just said, we listened to the reverted transaction on blockchain, and we found that it's even it, the, 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 the transaction was reverted, and we found it's, a, uh, it's an attack transactions. And then we automatically synthesized a similar uh, attack contract by replace the profit addresses with our own addresses, and we issue these transactions, and the transaction successfully on the blockchain to you know to rescue the five million uh, US dollars for Paris space. And we uh, an another example is a uh, uh, is a pet purse uh, which was attacked uh, in this February. The, the smart contract has a vulnerability, and the attackers they uh, they attack this uh, this DeFi protocol, but the attackers. Uh, he or she made a, a mistake. There is no logic to withdraw the funds inside the attack smart contract. So the question becomes how to withdraw the remaining 2.4 million US dollars inside the attack contract, inside the attack contract, because there is no logic, you know, to withdraw these uh, remaining uh, funds inside the attack contract. So because we have an internal system to automatically disassemble the attack smart contract, and we have some heuristic, you know, to analyze this attack smart contract. And we found a couple interesting, fi interesting facts about this uh, attack smart contract. First, the flash known callback of that contract is open. Second, the USDC approved to the uh, platypus pool contract. So what can we do? We can upgrade the pool contract and use the approved privilege by the uh, attack contract to withdraw the remaining USDC, right, inside this uh, attack contract. And we uh, shared the approval uh, concept uh, to the protocol, and the protocol successfully, you know, uh, withdraw 2.4 million US dollars from uh, this my con from attack contract. So uh, another is the transit swap. Transit swap was attacked and front run by MEV bot. So we found that the addresses of the MV bot was generated by a vulnerable profanity tool, right? The profanity tool because the vulnerability, uh, we can calculate a private key of this MV bot and we can, you know, uh, uh, waste our funds and return to the uh, protocol. So how to make this system more effective? I think we have some insights. You need to act fast, right? You need to know fast and you need to act fast. And accuracy is the key. You need to, you cannot, introduce too much false positives as we, we have a panel last, uh, yesterday and we are talking about the false positive of our monitoring tool. If your monitoring tool reports too much alarms uh, uh, to your customers, then the product cannot be used, right? And we can take a systematic way to act, not just from the run, the, the, the attackers. We have some tools to analyze the contracts, we to disassemble the contract. We have some uh, heuristic, you know, to, to perform more analysis on the uh, body code. We, we, we take all these measures into, to, build a, a, a pro, to build a system, to build a product. And uh, we saw an uh, arm risk between the attackers and the uh, security researchers. We see some attackers, they are using obfuscation, some on-time, wrong-time measures, you know, to, to, to defend all these things. So 
so so uh, based on this, we build a Falcon block system, and we have a waiting list so that if you are you guys are interested, you can join our waiting list. You know, to um, get updated information of the Falcon block system, and we also have a TG group some uh, under the uh, Twitters. You guys, if you are interested, you can follow us. Thanks, and uh, I'm I'm free to take in um, question if you have. Thanks very much. Thank you, Andy. So I think we have two or three minutes for questions. Um, Heidi's here. Hey, um, I don't want to shill their tools too much, but they're really badass, first off. <laughs> Thanks. Second off, um, the one question I have is you guys do a lot of hackbacks, let's just call them that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you guys protect yourselves from the liability of doing that and all of the legal garbage that comes along with doing that? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. Yes, and the, the, the security ethics is um, uh, we are taking very seriously. So for the hacking back or for the blocking uh, attack transactions, we only perform these actions uh, after we saw an attack transaction in place. We do not perform such attack transaction, you know, without seeing other ones is doing that. Yeah. So I think because we are, you know, protecting users and we take a proactive approach, if we do not take action, then the better guys, they will take action, they will take all the money. Right. Any other questions? We got a bit of time. Nope. Well, ah, we got one over there. So maybe that's a follow up uh, to a question, but like, so that means that if, let's say, somebody finds a vulnerability that has not been exploited and there is no attack transaction, you are legally prevented from acting like on a, like do like a white hat hack and save the user's funds? Um, so, so we are not, uh, uh, so let me uh, rephrase. So we are not hacking, uh, hacking the, the user's funds. So we just automatically reconstruct the, the contract by the attackers and then uh, move the funds inside another wallet. Then we will return back to all these funds to the uh, protocol and to the users. So yeah, I think it's, it's, you know, it's debatable for the uh, ethics issue, but um, if we only uh, do these things uh, with the heart of protecting users, I think we are good here. Got time for one more. Don't be shy. Yep. So, so it, you know, it's clear you're doing the right thing. Do you have any actual legal protection in place? Like, like you know, is, do you have a lawyer sitting there and checking <laughs> that? Uh, currently, we, we do not, actually. Yeah, but uh, we will consider, you know, hire a new one. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you, Andy. Thanks so much. Thanks for Thanks. your time. Give it up for Andy. Thank you.